Because only in freedom okay. can you choose to love God. And this is why the Christian message is so beautiful. Because God is offering us adoption as his children. He is willing to embrace us as his children, ladies and gentlemen. So did God create suffering, So, ladies and gentlemen, did God create suffering? In Isaiah, it says, I am the creator. I am the creator of blessings and calamity. God allows calamity. God allows suffering. He allows a world in which suffering occurs because suffering, ladies and gentlemen, suffering, ladies and gentlemen, allows us to make choices about whether we invest our money in building nuclear weapons or whether we invest our money finding the cure to cancer. Real suffering in the world presents us with real choices. It allows us to make choices to grow, ladies and gentlemen. And so God must allow us to grow so that we can come to him and embrace him freely in love. Okay, okay, okay. 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 that your question. <laughs> right. Why? I'll come and see you. Okay, why, why is it nonsense? <laughs> you know as well as I do. That Talk God, to the crowd. If God created everything, yep. he also created evil. No. He created the fallen angel. Can I reply to that? Go on. Right. My brother says that God created evil. Christians don't believe that evil is an active force. Christians believe that evil is the absence of good. It is the deprivation of something. How does it manifest itself? In the same way, I'm going to continue, I'm going to finish the first question. It happens like a shadow does according to light. What is a shadow except the absence of light? And what is evil except the absence of good? God doesn't create evil. He simply allows for the absence of good and that absence we call evil. So why did he allow that to happen? I can refer you to my earlier answer, Andrew. It's about freedom. It's about allowing real choices. The thing is, unless you know God's mind, which obviously you don't, how do you know that the whole parameter of things that we experience that you might call good or bad or evil is actually limited to what we know and understand right of course you don't know that you can't know that because you don't know the mind of god Shall so, I reply? So, so if you're talking about if, if you're saying that it's simply evil is the absence of good yeah you're not really saying anything i am I mean, uh, to give some examples of evil from or bad things happening from a non-biblical perspective right so so let, let, let me just reply to this point because it's really important that you get this absence is not a thing god creates things that exist yes. right yeah. absence is not a thing that exists it is an absence of something else. Yes. Like a shadow is the absence of light, yes. right? You can't have a shadow without light. Yes. You can't have good, good. Yes. you can't have good without the possibility of its absence, right? Okay. right? Or, rather, or rather, my apologies, rather, you can't have evil. Itself. Right, so evil manifests itself in the opposite of virtue. It manifests itself in things like lust and greed. It manifests itself in things like envy. It manifests itself in things like selfishness, a lack of self-control. It manifests itself in pride. It manifests itself in anger. All of these things that I've just described are the absence of something else. 
they are, I wouldn't say they're the absence. I would say I would use different language and say that they are the opposite of something else. Right. Yeah. Okay. And metaphysically, what I'm saying is God didn't create anger. I'm not interested in metaphysics. Though. I'm not interested in that kind of um, let's obfuscate. Uh, I can't even say the word. Obfuscate. Obfuscate. I'm not interested in metaphysical. I'm interested in real world examples of good things happening and bad things happening and how we distinguish between the two. Well, can we distinguish between the two without believing in the Christian God or the Muslim God or yeah. any other God? Etc. Yeah. Obviously we can, because I don't believe, as you know, because we've been... We've talked, years. we've talked. Um, uh, yeah, so it's not necessary to have your understanding of where evil comes from. Um, my understanding will be more biological, as, as, as you know. Um, so yeah, so I don't accept your explanation. I, I accept it's a well thought out explanation, but I think it's a bit word salad, basically. Right, so, so let me come to it. So, so you, you asked us how do we know, what, one of the questions that you asked me earlier that I didn't get around to answering was how do we know what the mind of God is and you asserted that we can't know the mind of God. Otherwise you wouldn't know. Right. I do not know anything beyond what God has revealed. Precisely. But God has revealed things. He's revealed things in creation. He's revealed things in scripture. He's revealed things in Christ. He's revealed things, you know, uh, as an extension of the creation argument within my own mind. The, uh, these such things are like that there is a creator. We can see that just by looking at creation itself. The idea, the idea, the idea, the idea, the idea that there is a, a reality beyond this, this material world is something I can know just by thinking. The idea, no, you can believe no but I can know it as well. Because we're having a discussion about evil, yeah. right? Evil is, well, well, evil is not a, a substance. Evil is a non-physical reality that exists evil, in the world. Evil, are, evil is actions based on our feelings. Right, but how do we decide what is evil? By having a discussion about the harm that's caused. Right. However, that discussion revolves around preset values, doesn't it? Um, so yes. me and you would agree yeah. that what the communists did Preset in Ukraine... Values are universal, are right. Not just Christian Hold on one second though. Those, those values you assume are universal, but we have countless examples of people that structure societies in ways opposite to those values. Absolutely. So they're not necessarily universal. No, but they are because we also have examples from around the world of, of societies that do yes. get on and flourish and generally, unless they're trying to defend themselves, don't go out and commit atrocities, etc. Et so we've got. And they're not all Christians. So we've got. So we've got. Therefore, something in nature. Yes. Something in nature yes. that allows us to see. That that's where yes. our morality yeah, 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 comes yeah. from. Yes. yes. We've had this conversation I know. Before. But my point to you is, the whole structure of the language, in its description, is telling us that. All of nature is pointing to something outside of the material world. Well, you might be evil, 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 for instance, that value judgment that something is evil is based on a, a, another concept, values. Values are not material things. They are extra material. They are, as it were, supernatural. No, I, They're I would, above I would say, nature. No, I wouldn't say that. I, I, they, are, no, my apologies. they are products I misspoke. of our mind. I misspoke. They, they are non-material. They are they a part are of nature. They are, they are a part of right. nature. They are a part of our mind. We create value for ourselves. Great. And for other people so we've us. we've now agreed. We've now agreed that there are non-material realities to the natural yes. world. Yes. That Great. We can observe Good. And that we know exist because we are living them Good. every day. Right. You can't say that about. God as described in the right. Bible or the Quran so, or the Torah. Or so so let, let let me come to that because. In terms of, you, you know and I know that mind emerges from brain. Right. I don't think it is a stretch, given the common experience of the supernatural, that out of mind emerges uh, the experience of the supernatural. I, I would, I would right. say, yes, we have an imagination. We can make things up. However, however. We can invent things. Right, hold on. However. 
These things are not mere imaginings, as you assert. These things, these experiences, these experiences are rooted in historical realities, they're rooted in philosophical realities, they're rooted in transformative uh, uh, existential realities. There's a lot there to dissect, as you know, there's a lot there to dissect because history, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm perfectly willing to accept that there are parts of the Bible, for example, that are probably, uh, you're a much better historical scholar than me, that are probably historically true, yeah. right? But that's different from saying that one, it's all true, and that history is always true, and yeah. that we know, if there's one thing that we do know, we can't say for certain, is that human beings have an incredible imagination. I'd go along with that. Yeah. And so it's not beyond humanity, you know I believe this, yeah. for man to create God rather than God to create man. Right. We create all sorts of super. I, I agree. Human beings create all kinds of gods. Yeah. Right? But they create things based on their experiences. Yes. So we create theatrical plays based on anecdotes of real life. We create movies based on anecdotes of real life. Um, even science fiction that projects technology way into the future is based on the fact of technological progress we've experienced. So in other words, our imagination is based upon experiences. And therefore, like Schleiermacher argues, one of the ways that we can know God exists is because of the consistent experience of the supernatural. We imagine, one second, let me finish, I'm landing, I'm landing, I'm landing, I'm landing, I'm landing, because you agree with the premise, you agree with the premise that we imagine things based on our experiences. The reason why people invent gods is because people have had experiences with demons, people have had experiences with angels, and people have had experiences with God himself. Or what they think based on the times and their understanding of the world are angels, are demons, etc. Yeah. But again, you, that was a big appeal to popularity, Bob, because as you very well know, the truth of a claim is not based on how many people believe it. True. Thousands of years ago, or even hundreds of years ago, millions of people thought that the sun went round the earth. Because that was our observation on a daily basis. Yeah, and the Quran teaches that, yes. still. <laughs> Which is why, as you know, it's a load of garbage. Yeah. yeah. We know differently, so that's not even an argument. But, I mean, I haven't actually come down to have a discussion it's always lovely to see I've you, just bro. come down to just to see you and see how you are and to... Um, well, if you're still around here when I finish, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, let go you, out for a I'll let you do your talk and then I'll have a conversation with you privately as All well right. about things that I've kind of... I'll probably be finishing... Wait, come, come and speak to me where around dusk. Uh, come and grab train, me. I've got to get the train back at what 7 o'clock. What time? 7 o'clock. Yeah. That's time. Yeah, yeah. Probably a short so cup of tea. Uh, come, and come and grab me when is it now? Uh, the time is probably soon. Uh, come and grab me. Come and grab me around. Come and grab me around 5:30. What time is it now? Uh, it's coming up to four. Because I've got a mobile phone. All oh, right. <laughs> can, do ask somebody. Yeah. I'll be around anyway. Come and grab me around 5:30. Yeah. Please yeah? Come and see you it's good to see you again. All right. I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish on this point because the last point that the, the last point that my brother made was that was that God, that, that, that I was appealing to the idea of popularity. But the experience of the supernatural is one of the most commonly attested experiences in the whole of human history, in the whole of human civilization. We can't simply dismiss the fact that every single civilization and all the way through history there has been a consistent testimony to the supernatural. I think that that is clear evidence that there is something supernatural above nature that is real in the world in which we live, ladies and gentlemen. And I think that atheists struggle to give an account of the world, atheists like Steve, give an account. Here's, here's, what, here's what atheist Steve struggles with. My struggle. Atheist Steve and atheist Heiko over there, 
They struggle to give an account of the world that explains the fullness of human experience. What does that even mean? I'll break it down for you, the Steve. The fullness of human experience. experience. I'll break it down for break you, Steve. I'll tell you about the fullness of gorilla experience. <laughs> Ladies, I'm going to... We don't need to explain gorilla experience. Why, Why is that less important? Come on, let me answer your first question. Because the reality is, ladies and gentlemen, as you well know, okay. you live your lives by non-material realities all the time. By a concept of truth, by the idea of values, by a concept of good and evil. These are not material realities. Show me the substance that is truth. Show me the substance that is evil. It doesn't exist in the material world. And yet these non-material realities clearly are part of the world, the reality that in which we live. Atheism is committed to the idea of an absurd reduction to materialism alone. And materialism alone cannot get oh. us to values. Oh, Go on, yeah, yeah. why am I wrong? Atheists aren't limited by materialism whatsoever. One very important, quite interesting sometimes, aspect of my reality is my dream world. <laughs> Every night when I go to sleep, Invariably, I have dreams. Fre frequently, I can't remember them. We don't need the ad hominem, sir. I may, frequently, I may not remember them, but dream world is not materialism. So to say that atheists have no understanding or appreciation of anything non-material is an abject failure, okay. failed statement. So, so let me be clear. Atheists deny the possibility of non-material realities. What, about, what are dreams? What are dreams? Well, that's a proof that yeah, the world has non-material realities. And atheists accept dreams. They okay. Would be, they would be fools to not accept so, dreams. Right, one second. So I, I, proved, so let's I think, just proved your point let's, immediately. Okay, let's, Show me one atheist that doesn't accept the dream world. Right. Is it a real world? Not in the material sense, no. Right. Is and it... every atheist accepts the dream world. Yes, granted. So your point is disproved. No, hold on, hold on. You, you're, you're, hold on, your Steve. Your position was atheism cannot accept I'm going anything to get there. that's non-material. Right, now let... I've immediately proven that point to be wrong. Okay. What gives rise to dreams? Minds. Minds. Yeah. What, what gives, gives rise, rise to, to minds? One second. Minds. What gives rise what gives to, rise to Scientology? Our minds. minds. Right, are we going to shout over one another? Oh, we can shout. Right. Is a mind a material thing or a non-material thing? It comes from the material, but it is not right. material Right. Okay, granted. So, I am willing... His head like he's I am tired. willing, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Move away, then. I am willing, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, to advance the argument now that we've established non-material realities as something that we share, that God, that God, I'll, I'll even accept it as a correction. I'll even accept wow. it as a correction, wow. ladies and gentlemen. God works in mysterious ways, doesn't he? <laughs> if we accept, ladies and gentlemen, that there can be non-material realities, then the possibility of God as a non-material reality becomes wow. open and, to us. And of fairies and of the tooth fairies. Yes, of fairies and, and tooth fairies and dragons and monsters yeah. that go boo in All the night. Of crazy All of these some things, of the things become about, possibilities. All sorts of crazy so, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, if now God is a possibility, as we have established it is, we can then begin to no examine we no can then begin the we can then begin to examine the evidence to see if there is evidence for God's existence. It is fact. We're going to evidence evidence ladies and gentlemen. Atheism there are so many to choose from. Atheism 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 Let's just start on oh, Steve. Why are we going to Are we just going to shout? Because he's being a bit of a warning. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, let us examine the evidence to see if there is a God.
Sorry. Right. Sorry. I'll stand like that. He's so domineering, isn't he? So, ladies and gentlemen, let's examine the evidence to see if there is a creator. How would we know that there is a creator? We wouldn't. We, we would wouldn't. expect we wouldn't. to see clear there. evidence of the creator. The so I want to ask Steve a simple question. Well, My simple question is this. Is a language an emergent property of a mind? Uh, okay, okay, okay. It's more than that. It's, it's more, more than that. It's not one mind either. Oh, okay. And languages evolve and change and grow. So is that a yes then? So what was the question? Is it, is it Steve? A... Steve was too busy looking for his quip. He didn't hear the question. Let me ask this question again. Is language, is language a property of mind? Can you have language without mind? Yes, he says. Yes, because you can have language written down in millions of books, humankind swept out, destroyed, no longer existing, and the language still exists in the books. So some human created those languages? The language existed at some point. Yes, but it can exist without the mind. No, it existed because of a mind. What Bob means is... He's an atheist, by the way. I know, I know. Does, well, he's fine interpreting your question does, for me. Does we'll language it. emerge from a mind? So I would say it's an evolved. So is that a yes? Yeah. Is that a yes? Right. Uh, so he not says any yes. Mind. Do mind. you? Mind. Right. Mind. So so yeah. we agree. Multiple. One, so we multiple. have agreed, ladies and gentlemen. Not a mind. Not a mind. We have mind. agreed mind. that language emerges because of the presence of mind. Minds, plural. Put right, right. Not right ladies and gentlemen. Can we put an S on the end? Three, Are you saying that can one... Can we put an S on the one end second, One second, one well, second. Let's not move on. I'm going to answer that question. Can we put an S on the end? I'm going to say that it is unnecessary <laughs> because a single person living in isolation can still create a language to discuss their world. No one else would understand it, but they would understand it. But they would. A language is a form. Let listen now. Be quiet now for a second. A language is a form of communication. Yes. A language is a form of communication. That's the only. Great. That's the only purpose. Great. 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 We've established. Only one person has it. It's not communicating. Thank you. It's not a language. He's not helping language. my argument. He doesn't know why. But here's why he's helping my it's argument. Not a battle. It's not a because battle. language. Because language is about communicating I something to someone. Great. Great, great, ladies and, and gentlemen. I'm trying to claim credit for the point that I've just Now made. let me ask it's Steve another question. Language. Now let me ask Steve it's another battle, question. In now let me ask Steve another question. It's all about fighting and Is mathematics a language? There's lots of different languages it's within a mathematics. Of is it a language? It's a collective it's a of languages. Of it is a language a then, isn't it? Of languages. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen. Gonna make the point. It's a collective. We've established that languages emerge because of the presence of minds that they are about communication and that mathematics is a language. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Mathematicians, high-level mathematicians will tell you that they are discovering mathematics. They are not inventing mathematics. They are discovering mathematics. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, how does this evidence the existence of God? Mathematics and physics overlap in terms and in biology as well. They overlap in the description of the universe. But the mathematics in nature was there before we discovered it. The mathematicians will tell you that they are discovering mathematics and the mathematics is there in nature 
before we discover the mathematics. And so we are discovering a language in nature, in reality, that is there before we discuss well, I might it. Discover a new god tomorrow. You never know. Right. Do you want to address what I said, or were you too busy no, shouting? No, because it's irrelevant. It's just rambling, rambling nonsense. How anything you've just said can then lead to, and therefore God must exist, because we're discovering mathematics. I mean, for crying out loud, where's the link? Right. I'll explain where's the, the link? link. I'll explain the well, link. Get on with it, because we have. I'll got explain all the link, and hopefully Steve will actually listen this time. Let's go through the I fall asleep. Let's go through the steps again. Here's my shoulder. Let's go through the steps again. Can we discover maths that we didn't language know. results because of the existence of minds. Mathematics is a language. Mathematics is being discovered in nature. Nature existed before us. Nature has a language encoded within it which demonstrates that nature has a creator that has established his language in its existence. As it says in the Psalms, the heavens and the earth declare the glory of God. Night and day they pour forth speech and there is no nation in earth that is not without hearing their words. If there is a language in nature in the universe, then the universe has a creator. Why? Why? Where's the link? Why? 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 Because it shows a mind like this, behind right. creation. Give us an Don't go like that. So, no which part of the you. premise was wrong? You said that, so therefore there must be a creator. Because a language is created by minds, we must have a creator. So, who put mathematics in nature? Nobody. No one. Nobody. Question. Your question is fallacious. No. Why is it fallacious? The proper question is what. If, if, if your premise is true, what put mathematics into nature? You're presupposing the conclusion rather than asking a legitimate question. Whether it's who or what? Yes. Right. You said who. Yes. But that's the wrong question. Bro, why what did I say it? who? What is it because you believe in God? No. Are you trying to get there? No. The, great, the proper question is, what's the best explanation for why we perceive mathematics and why we understand mathematics the way we do, and it's seen all around us in the fact that I can count how many trees there are in this park or how many buildings there are, how many people or whatever. It's all around us. Yeah. It's simply a part of nature that we've discovered because of our enhanced minds, our enhanced brains. So let Nobody us reply. Nobody is putting anything anywhere. Let us reply. That's because to suggest so is a complete non sequitur and it's a fallacy. You know it. No, it is not a fallacy. It's a sound argument. And let me explain why it's a sound argument. Let me explain why it's a sound argument. Because, ladies and gentlemen, shall, shall we stand this way? Steve, are you still in? Come this way, guys, if you want to listen to this conversation. Come this way. Let me explain why it's a sound argument, ladies and gentlemen. It's a sound argument. It's a sound argument because in mathematics, we use perfect mathematical structures like pi. Pi is a perfect number. It is a description of a non-material reality. A perfect sphere is what is being described in pi. That perfect sphere does not exist anywhere in nature and yet it exists in our mathematical descriptions of the universe. In other words, in other words, ladies and gentlemen, in other words, ladies and gentlemen, in other words, ladies and gentlemen, which is the measure of a circle? Which is the measure of a circle? Which is the measure of a circle? Which is the measure of a circle?
Now, ladies and gentlemen, he's frightened by the argument. It is the measure of a perfect circle. Calm down, see. He's just rattled because he knows he's losing the argument. He's just rattled because he knows he's losing the argument. He's, he's just rattled because he knows he's losing the argument. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, so, ladies and gentlemen, the use of pi, ladies and gentlemen, is not rooted in any human observation. It is not rooted in any human experience. It is a pure concept of a reality that is not observable, and yet pi is essential, is essential to countless mathematical descriptions of the universe. In other words, in other words, it is a concept that points towards perfection, it points towards infinity, and it points towards something supernatural. And yet, ladies and gentle, and ladies and gentlemen, it, in, it is used in our mathematical codes to describe nature, which means that it is in nature, apart from our experience. We discovered pi. We didn't invent pi. Say yes, exactly. But is mathematics the production of mind? Did we discover mathematics? Did we discover mathematics or invent it? What kind of argument is this? What kind of argument is that? It goes on He's just and upset on and because on. he can't it's answer the question. He's just upset because he doesn't have an argument. Did you hear the question over here? You need to show your atheist friend. Exactly. He doesn't have an argument. God that is perfect. How are you linking? Why would Pi be like that? But so, ladies and gentlemen, how am I linking? How do I link Pi to God? How do I link Pi to God, ladies and gentlemen? We discover Pi. We don't invent Pi. We can't invent Pi because it is beyond the mind of a human to invent pi because it is an infinite number. We discover it, but pi exists as a reality in this world, which means that it was another mind that put pi into the universe, not our mind, and he put pi into the coding of the universe so that we could see that the universe has a creator. Right, well, explain why it's childish. Over because Steve you, shouting. Because as you okay, know, I work in education right, and I, I hear children talking that exact same way all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Five, yeah. Five, yeah. Let him finish making his point. Five to 11 year olds talking that way, they have such an attachment to, to the way that they think something is and they're not of the mental capability at a certain age to understand any better. Some people unfortunately Some carry that on into adulthood. That's religious thinking generally as far as I'm concerned. And you've just shown it here. That's just a prime example of what you've said. Can I reply? You can reply, but it's, it's not going to make any difference because you've already said what you've said, which is God put pie into nature. Can I reply? You can, but okay. uh, am I wrong? In, that's right. So, ladies and gentlemen, you said, I'm going to reply. Did you, yes, I did say that. Yes, did I did say that. So, let me reply, ladies and gentlemen, because what I heard with the only person actually bothering to try and engage with the argument, as opposed to someone who's just upset because he can't engage with the argument, really right? Is this? Is this? Well, I think all religious thinking is childish. No, not all. Just How, ladies and gentlemen, no, no. is that an argument, a reply to the argument that I presented? It's not. It's just a sophisticated ad hominem. It's essentially saying. It's essentially saying. 
Bob, I think you're guilty of childish thinking. That was the reply, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just go through the stages of the argument again and then invite these two illustrious atheists to come up with some kind of response. Ladies and gentlemen, language, language is an emergent property of mind. You can't have a language without mind. Mathematics is a language. Mathematics is not, ladies and gentlemen, mathematics, ladies and gentlemen, mathematics, ladies and gentlemen, mathematics, ladies and gentlemen, is not something that we invent. It is something that we are discovering and we are discovering it in nature. If we are discovering it in nature, ladies and gentlemen, we are not the one that put the language there. Some other mind put the language there and we are learning the language of another person. And that is why nature points towards a creator. Notice how upset they are.